All right, hello and welcome to episode seven of the Too Hard to Pass podcast. I am your host Juan Martinez, and to my, I still whatever. It's uh, it's Jock Slade, your co-host on the side. On on the side, Jock is there. <laughs> to the left or right, I don't know how. Like I think last week it was funny because like on one of the on the recording. I ended up on the left side on one part, and then like when we did Sneaker Mount Rushmore, I ended up on the right side. It was weird. So for people who are watching this on the video, appreciate the comments and all that good stuff. Yes. But we're also on all the audio platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon, I think. So yeah, no, yeah. like there, comment, give the five-star ratings, really appreciate that. Yeah, on to the show. Jacques, you were in um, Canada? I didn't even know yeah. that was a thing. You were, uh, what, what? I didn't know that what was happened? a thing. Like, what, like, you didn't know that no. Canada was a thing? What do you mean? Yes, what, I, what I have mean? no idea. Yeah. I did not know. <laughs> Canada was always this foreign concept to me. It was just like, what? what is what is Canada? What? That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, I, I apologize to all of our Canadian listeners. Uh, please Love ignore Canada, by the way. I've been to Vancouver, Toronto. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But yes, oh, no, don't uh, try you to clean actually... it up now. No, don't try and clean <laughs> no. it up now. No, no, no. Oh, no. I'm not uh, going to be allowed in the well, country good. anymore. Yeah. Damn. Well, good people of Canada. Um, sorry for my co-host's behavior. Uh, uh -huh. I was I was in Montreal slash Quebec at mm -hmm. uh, Mount Tremblant. And uh, it was a fantastic time. I was there with Adidas for their Fleece Fairways 24 event, which is um, where they invite a bunch of their their um influencer partners like their brand partners influencer partners some retail mm -hmm. outlets and they invite them out basically for two days of golf but it's also to get a little bit uh, an opportunity to test out some of their fall and winter gear it's obviously a little cooler and the weather is changing in montreal or, or in canada and so we get to basically test out like how well the sweater works or how well the layering pieces that they have works, which is, mm -hmm. and they have some really great stuff. Um, full disclosure, I am uh, an Adidas partner. Uh, they signed me as an athlete this year for my on-camera appearances. So uh, take that with a, you know, with a grain of salt with everything that I'm, I'm about to tell you guys. Um, mm -hmm. That's why I got invited to the event, but beautiful event put on, went to Mount Tremblant, which is like this uh, mountain town, has the full gondolas and everything to take you up the mountain and the whole nine. Very, be very beautiful. Played two, uh, two, two golf courses there and just really had a great time. And really got to test out the gear. Unfortunately, the weather didn't exactly cooperate. It was mm -hmm. a little warmer than I think anybody wanted it to be. So it was like the mid seventies, as opposed to being in with around this time with there, which is usually like the fifties and sixties. Uh. So it was a little warm. So everyone basically started out layered up in the morning. Cause it was a mm -hmm. little cool in the morning, but by the time you got to like the first or the second hole, you were down to like your polo just because it was getting so warm, unfortunately, but they do a lot of great stuff. And it honestly made me think about the partners that are in and the, the brands that are in the golf space. Mm -hmm. And I I think Adidas, and I'll, I'll probably do a reel about this as well, but I think Adidas is uniquely positioned to grab a big chunk of the market right now. Um, oh, okay. Of course you have the, you have like the Grayson's and the Foot Joys and all of those, all of those brands as well. But Adidas has a very unique angle where they do both the apparel and the footwear. Mm. And they can, I think, touch culture in a way that no other brand in the market really can. Like right. Nike is has an, had an opportunity there, but they've obviously been dropping the ball considerably for mm -hmm. the last five, six, ten years or whatever it is. But I think Adidas is coming around to like, hey, we're uniquely positioned in this space and we can do some really cool things. Like they just released that that skate collab that they did with Adidas Skate and Golf. And it's like this baggier golf performance gear, which looks really dope. So mm -hmm. it's interesting. I'll be interested to see how far, where they take things next year. You know, they say they've got a lot of plans. They've been very active in the influencer space. A lot of the people that I watch for golf, golf content are, are are wearing Adidas, both mm -hmm. like the people that wear it from a style perspective and both that wear it from a a, a, um, a performance perfect perspective. 
you see right. them starting to wear Adidas golf gear. Like the people at me and my golf, uh, Trotty Golf is wearing it. Uh, Caitlin Henderson is wearing it. So you're seeing, you're seeing a, a ton of people. Bradford Wilson wears it. You see a ton of people in the space. Uh, Lulu Gonzalez, who's a comedian, but she's also a golfer. She's wearing Adidas now. They're being very active in pursuing these people from different interests of entertainment and in, the, in and around the world of golf. And I, th I think it's going to have some dividends for them. I think it's going to turn things around. It'll be very exciting to see what 2025 looks like for them. Right. I mean, that's interesting that you mentioned that Adidas has this um, position that they are able to like influence and also just, you know, get into a space in a way that Nike wasn't able to, because you said like Nike Jib dropped the ball. Um, they had their opportunities previously, but they've kind of like, just like kind of got lazy with it or didn't really like put yeah. as much effort as they should have. So Adidas, you know, coming in there and just, you know, they bring that credibility. You know, when you think of yes. Adidas, you still think, you, st you, you know, you think it's an athletic brand, but you're also thinking about it also in the lifestyle sense. Mm -hmm. Like they come at it from both angles. So, you know, what the way and the way that golf is trending in terms of like style, fashion, however you want to call it. Yeah. yeah Adidas is, has a great opportunity to get in there and like, you know, really capitalize in a way that other brands, like you mentioned, like the Foot Joys, because when you think of Foot Joy, you think golf. You don't really think about yeah. it in any other sense. You know, yeah. so Adidas comes at it from like all different angles. They can come at like, you know, I, I think it'd be funny if you could get like Anthony Edwards or somebody like that on like the golf course, <laughs> bring that kind of energy to, which we'll talk about yeah. later, like that kind of like younger, more like brash, more like, you know, that kind of energy into the golf. So yeah, yeah, yeah no, it ain't see, that I thought I was going to come in with something interesting. I was like, oh, I watched Transformers 1, but you're like, I got to go to Canada. I'm like, oh man. No, no, not, Transformers 1 no, is that's just not... as, is just as good. Is it? Is it though? Yeah. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. No question I mean, in my mind. As children of the eighties, I guess it is uh, interesting for both of us. So yeah, I got to watch uh, Transformers one. Went with the family, and I gotta say, man, it's probably the best Transformers movie in a very long time. Really? Uh, it, oh yeah, it's certainly a lot better than any of the Michael Bay movies, any of those live action wow. movies, I, with the that's... exception of yeah. You know, oh, you're not that gonna hurts. defend. You are not going to defend any of those Michael Bay movies, are you? Why Why wouldn't you defend the Michael Bay movies? They're terrible. There has not been a single... Okay, the first the first Transformers movie, the first Michael Bay one, that was okay. Mostly for Megan Fox. But everything after that was just a dumpster fire of, I can't tell what these transformations look like. It's just gears... Brr, brr, like what? It doesn't make sense. The stories are terrible. And then when they rebooted it with Bumblebee, I was like, oh, that's good. That was a good intro to like, you know, try to like restart the franchise. And I'm all for that. And then I think it was, was it like War Beast, the Beast Wars last year? It was okay. But this one, I think it was pretty much a return to form. It's probably like my favorite Transformers movie since like the original animated movie that wrecked a lot of childhoods, um, especially those first five minutes. <laughs> But um, no, Transformers One is a pretty good story. I mean, it tells the story of how um, Optimus Prime and Megatron were best friends in the beginning, yeah. and how you know you see the inevitable heel turn. And I think it was a well executed story. I mean, it's still you know it's a movie for kids, but there's definitely enough bits there for like adults to really cling on to, especially like you know the 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 adults who grew up like watching Transformers. So there's plenty of that. There's a lot of like nostalgic hits. And, you know, I don't want to, like, spoil too much about the movie, so definitely go watch it. Uh, yeah, but... I want to see it. I want to see it. I definitely want to see it. I definitely but... want to see it. Some people have started comparing it to, like, oh, this is this does for Transformers what Enter the Spider-Verse for, for Spider-Man. Or that uh, Ninja Turtles movie last year uh, that was pretty good uh, is going to do for that. It's going to be on that level. I don't think so. I think it's a little bit, a little bit level below that. Um, but it's still a pretty good movie. Um, the voice actors, uh, Chris Hemsworth was, uh, was, uh, Optimus Prime and he does a pretty good Optimus Prime. Not, it's not like, a, it's not, he's not trying to replicate like the original voice, but he does his own yeah. flavor to it, which I think is fine. It's still a little, little weird to hear him go for an American accent. Cause you know, you've heard Chris Hemsworth, he's Australian. And he's yeah. Thor, and he's always had like you know just a non-American accent all these years, and then to hear him try to go for like an American accent, it's a little like you'll notice it. You'll just notice it once um, you like actually hear him. Like, yeah, yeah. One you'll just notice yeah. he's like, wait, it's that's not 
that's maybe not how it would sound like, but I, I would have preferred he was just stuck with like, you know, his actual accent, his native tongue. Gotcha. As to say. Gotcha. And then uh, Bright Tyree Henry, he was uh, Megatron. A D6, D, his original name is D16, but he becomes Megatron. Also, great. He's because first of all, he's a phenomenal actor, and um, the the turn that he goes from like good to bad is pretty good as well. Um, okay. There are bits that uh, are just a little. There are some bits where it's like a little. There's a bit like there's some sudden tone shifts that I'm like, ooh, I don't know if like kids are gonna like really react to this in a, in a positive way, just because like it's just, sometimes it feels sudden. I don't know how well it's doing in the box office or anything like that, but I do have. Hope they get a chance to continue the story because it's a good setup for what is to come in the future. Oh, I imagine so. Yeah, that's cool. that's cool. Okay, I'm I'm I'll probably try and go see it this weekend. Yeah, totally, totally. All right, so uh, moving on to the actual uh, meat of the show, Jacques. We've got some uh, interesting news that um, Trey Young might be uh, moving on to uh, something else. Uh, Trey Young, who uh, started out in the NBA as a Adidas guy. Yeah. is now potentially going to be going to a different brand. It's unknown at the moment what that brand might be, but there are word the word is coming out that Adidas is not going to be renewing his contract and he has been spotted at training camp wearing the Air Jordan 39 and the uh I believe it's the Anta Shockwave 5. So, and then there's also a report from I believe it was Soul Retriever that says that uh, Trey, his team, they're in talks with Anta to possibly sign on there. So seems like Anta is really some, making some big moves there, man. But um, what do you think about Trey Young possibly moving on to uh, a different sneaker brand? You know, it's always interesting when you see athletes move from one brand to another or taking some time off. Obviously, we saw the biggest I think movement that we saw was Kobe going from Adidas to Nike and, mm -hmm. you know, his in-between period. Mm -hmm. I kind of want Trey to have that same experience, that little in-between time. Take right. some time away, okay? If this is his last Adidas shoe, um, strange to me that he didn't wear it in, for media day. Right. Like, I, I imagine this is some sort of strategy uh, from his from his team. Mm -hmm. um, trying to kind of maybe s somehow level the playing field with Adidas for for whatever reason, whatever they've got going on there. Mm -hmm. So it's a little shocking that he didn't wear them. But I also get it. If, if that relationship has soured, which if he's wearing those, it must have soured a while yeah. ago. And just things yeah. haven't been haven't been well between mm -hmm. Adidas and Trey Young for a while. I don't know. And I would love to find out if that's a shoe thing. If it's a marketing thing, mm -hmm. if it's a money thing, if it's a combination of all those things, there there doesn't seem to be a lot of information out there about why this relationship has soured. Mm -hmm. I because mean, I mean to me he's still he's still a pretty high level player. He's he's still turning heads a little bit. Obviously he his he hasn't he hasn't he isn't as big as he used to be. Right. But I still feel he's young enough to still make a big impact on the game if things go right mm -hmm. and that's the thing is that trey hasn't really made the headlines that he did when he first you know came into the league right um mm -hmm. the atlanta hawks i think they went to the eastern conference finals in i think trey's uh, second or third year and that you know got a lot of people buzzing about trey i mean he was huge coming out of college and remember th there was this whole thing about like was it luca or was it trey you know, there was yeah. a big debate at the beginning of, like, who was going to be, you know, the bigger star. And for a while there, like, Trey seemed to have, like, the upper hand, at least for, like, the first year or two. Yeah. Just because, like, his team was more successful. He had those moments at the Garden. Like, people were kind of, like, kind of positioning him as, like, this generation's, like, Reggie Miller type yeah. of player. You know, the antagonist of the Knicks. So he had that going for him. And Adidas, you know, they capitalized on it. They got him a signature shoe, like what was it on his third season? It might have been the yeah, Trey Young like one. That. And it seemed like yeah. there was a lot of energy for, you know, Trey, at least from the start. But then it kind of started, like, you know, the Hawks weren't doing as well. And I don't know if Trey, maybe the highlights weren't coming around as much as they used to. But in Adidas, it seems like maybe they lost interest. And now that um Anthony yeah. Edwards comes Anthony Edwards comes along. And he is, you know, he's got the highlights, he's got the swag, he's got the game that, you know, they're really, 
really people really kind of gravitate towards and the attitude i mean it's weird because trey seems to have that kind of like style and swag and all of that but anthony edwards seems to have overshadowed him in every single way and i'm not even just it's not even just about like trey young it's also like donovan mitchell and even maybe dame lillard to a certain extent like anthony yeah. edwards has just kind of kind of just become this huge shadow that looms over everything adidas and it's kind of hard for me to blame them because edwards has just like made this huge jump you know in terms of like play and like performance of the team and just in terms of like marketability he seems to be like the most marketable guy out of adidas and adidas has just shift seems to have shifted all of their resource source resources towards edwards and you yeah. know maybe trey young has kind of taken that to mean that, oh, I can see the writing on the wall here. And either Adidas needs to like re up their commitment to me and kind of show that they will, you know, kind of put some more effort into marketing me as like a top flight guy on the roster, right. or it's time for me to move on. So, and I, I don't know, I, I can't blame Trey for like, you know, trying to move on, but I also, at the same time, I can't blame Adidas because they they may have like struck lightning in the bottle or whatever that term you know that terminology is you know yeah. it's hard for me to like yeah. blame Adidas. No, agreed. With Anthony Edwards being such in the in in, in the spotlight right now, mm -hmm. it's I can imagine it's hard for them to really put any energy towards anybody else because you know they don't want to lose that brand energy behind behind AE, which in result you know I feel like they tried to do that with. Um, with Donovan Mitchell, and they tried to do that with Trey Young, but those they just didn't catch on, and it could be a yeah. combination of like maybe the public wasn't ready for this the designs that Adidas was putting out for those guys, and so that's mm -hmm. why it didn't really catch on. And Anthony yeah. Edwards just happened to come at the at the right time, and mm -hmm. but I can imagine how that makes Trey feel or Trey's yeah. team feel, being mm -hmm. that like yo, like. This is a top tier guy. He was doing all the things that AE was doing. Why why didn't you guys put this kind of energy behind him? Exactly. Yeah. And that can sour I imagine that can sour the relationship as well. Again, I don't have any insight to this, so I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. But it, it I I would assume that they just couldn't come to terms. I imagine that Trey's team wanted the sort of national big exposure for Trey that right. Anthony Edwards is getting mm -hmm. and Adidas based on, I imagine their research felt that Trey young just wasn't that guy anymore yeah. and they weren't willing to pay as much as before or invest in him as much as they were before. And now it gives Trey the opportunity to look around and find a spot that may work better for him. Right. And so we talked about like um, Soul Retriever saying that Adidas, uh, oh no, um, Trey is in talks with Anta possibly. And yeah. that seems like an interesting move. And so we've kind of mentioned it in the show that, you know, if Trey were to make the jump to Anta, would he be a Kyrie or would he be a Clay? And it's interesting too because Kyrie and Clay are teammates now. So, yeah. but if you were to project. Uh, Trey Young signing with Anta, do you see him getting the Kyrie treatment, which means a brand, basically a brand unto himself, or mm -hmm. a clay, which means signature shoes, some fun moments, like maybe we get China Trey. Who knows, right? Yeah. We get we China get a China Trey. China Trey. <laughs> That's funny. But not necessarily the the rollout that Kyrie just got. Yeah. Trey is obviously not as big of a star as Kyrie is. Mm -hmm. Part of it, you know, you don't have a championship under your belt. You don't have the LeBron relationship or like he has now the Luka relationship. He's just, you know, he's kind of like a star on his own, but he doesn't have like that that star world around him. I I haven't seen much of Trey style wise, so I'm not sure what's the thing he's going to want from Anta outside mm -hmm. of just like a of a signature shoe deal right so with that being considered i would say he's more of a clay where he'll probably have a signature shoe and go over there and have you know have fun and ex explore china and do things for the fans 
Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure Trey is the guy that's going to be all into the design, all into the apparel and all of those things. I just I just haven't seen that from him socially on our that public right. side of him. Maybe he yes. is. So I think it could work for him to sign with Anta. I would I don't want him to sign under Kyrie or under Clay or anything like that. Oh, he sure, would have sure. to be his own. He would have mm -hmm. to be his own brand kind of thing, especially if, since he's coming from an Adidas signature deal. Right. And. You mentioned that you haven't seen like, you know, Trey's kind of um, design chops. It's not right. like with Kyrie, whenever he would have like, you know, when he was with Nike, he would talk nonstop about his um, signature shoes. He would talk, non yeah. talk nonstop about the design, how involved he was with the process. And, you know, we just never got that out of, well, most signature athletes, to be quite honest. And we certainly right. never got that out of Trey. We never got any uh, videos or bits or any like, you know, social hits about like him talking about the design and how involved he was with actually creating his shoe. It was right. just like, oh, here's an ad. Here's like pictures of him wearing the shoe. It's nothing, nothing beyond like the typical rollout of a signature shoe. So, right. yeah, you're right. It's probably going to be something in the clay range if it is, um, you know, if he were to sign with Anta. Now, wearing the Air Jordan 39, though, that was a, a bit of a shock, too, at the same time. I, yeah, I, don't, I did I don't not know where expect he that. Yeah, I don't know where he would, where, if he were to sign with Jordan Brand. And it's interesting because Luca's there. And, you know, there was always that big, you know, big deal about them in the same draft class and all that stuff. Like, where would Trey fit in with Jordan Brand? Because they already have Zion. They already have Tatum. They already have Luca. Paolo Bancaro has a uh, logo. And, you know, if he steps up, Maybe he's next up in line. Like, I don't know where Trey would fit in that Jordan brand family too, at the same time, you know? Yeah, that's, that's a great observation. I don't, I, I would hope, and this is no knock at Trey. I, I would hope that Jordan brand is done signing signature athletes for a while. And they're going to kind of <laughs> chill on that. Unless it's on, unless it's on the women's side, like a woman specifically, that's getting a women's signature shoe. Oh, sure. Sure. But, like they have enough signature guys right now. I know, mm -hmm. you know, obviously they're not promoting Chris Paul or Westbrook or any of those guys, but I, I just don't f see there being room. I would imagine he would come in if, if he's not going to be a signature athlete, Jordan brand would probably pay him some money to wear Jordan and Nike. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't really see a place for him on Jordan brand or, or, or even on Nike for that matter. I just don't see a, I don't see I don't, I don't see a roster spot for him. I see him as a I see him playing like a six. He's not the starting five. He's a he's right. a six man. I think. At the, it's at this weird, point right? In his career. It's weird, right? Because like Trey Young, you, you don't think of him as like an older vet of the league. You still think of him as like this yeah. young guy who was coming out of. I think it was like Oklahoma. It was kind of like oh, he's like the next Steph Curry, but he seems to be like in this weird in between. Like in terms of like you know in terms of like being a signature shoe guy. He seems to be in this weird, like, in-between spot where, like, he's not young enough that maybe a brand would take a lot of time to invest in building a signature right. shoe line for him. But he's also not old enough that people should look at him as, like, an old head, you know, who's just going to be wearing, like, you know, like a Paul George who, you know, had his signature yeah. run, show, shoe, shoe run with Nike but no longer has a line. And now he's going to be wearing, I guess, whatever he's going to be wearing <laughs> for the foreseeable yeah. future. He's not, like, at that point yet. It seems like there's still time for Trey, but I don't know that there's enough time for Trey at a Jordan brand. Maybe at Anta. Like, we've got Kevin Garnett. You know, he signed with Anta later on. Rajon Rondo signed with Anta a bit later on. So, you know, so there's possibilities there, but I don't know what he would be at Jordan brand. So, yeah, that's a interesting lane if he chooses to go that way. Yeah, I, I would hope... Uh... It'll be interesting to see where he lands. Maybe he goes to New Balance. Who knows? Mm. There's, you know, there's plenty of options out there. Maybe he's just trying out different silhouettes that he hasn't played in before. So this could be, you know, we could see, you know, Kobe Trey and just go through the time wearing a bunch of different silhouettes, which I, which I would, I would personally like to see. I would like to see him wear a bunch of different things. True, true. All right, so. Uh, moving on to um, what I would call a, um, I, I put it here on the no shock. I call it a boondoggle. Uh, I boondoggle. would call it, yeah, boondoggle. It's uh, the dot swoosh uh, Air Max One low poly, 
which is uh -oh. um, coming out, I believe, is like on the eighth, and it's going to be exclusive to uh, Nike's Dot Swoosh Web Three platform. And fortunately, fortunately, it seems like there's no um, gimmicks involved with this one. You don't need to have like an NFT. You don't need to play like some weird, silly games in order to secure yes. an order for this one. This is just straight. If you're a Dot Swoosh member, you you can pre-order the shoe, and it's it's they're calling it a pre-order jacques but is it really a pre-order because as it says on the terms of the uh the pay, the product you know the blo the the blog post i guess on dot swoosh it says while supplies last um so jacques when i think of a pre-order isn't the point of a pre-order is like hey we have these shoes we're we're putting it out there for a set number of days hours however you want to call it order as many as you like and we'll make them because as it, they say that uh, the shoe is going to take four months to ship, uh, 120 days. Mm -hmm. So my assumption, at least when I first read it, was like, oh, okay. So, you know, that's why it's going to take you four months is because Nike is going to actually create, you know, produce the shoes and then ship it yeah. out there. But the fact that it says while supplies last and they're limited to one order per dot switch member that kind of got my me thinking like why 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 even bother calling it a pre-order why even do it that way and so because dots whoosh as i guess has been trying to pre-order route like for the past couple months on like your your different releases or something like that which i thought was pretty cool i think that's the first step in them actually trying like nike trying something different with like their releases because you know sneakers app has been a uh, a mess a dumpster fire for a lot of users for, you know, basically going on almost a decade now. And now they're <laughs> finally trying pre-orders, at least yeah. some kind of version of a pre-order. But to actually go about go about it this way, where they're actually limiting the number of people who can order it and just having like a set number of sneakers out there, it's not really a pre-order, Jacques. And I think that's a little disappointing. I mean, it's 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 like Nike's version of a pre-order. I mean, maybe they will yeah. do like open editions at some point, and I think they should do that at some point. But with this one, and I, I guess the only reason why I am very um, critical of this is because I actually do like the Air Max One Low Poly because it has that video game tie into it. And um, as we talked about before we did the show, I have a lot of complaints about the coverage about the <laughs> the Air Max One Low Poly. Yes. Um, people have been mentioning it on their, you know, posts on their news sites oh it's based on like 8-bit video games i'm like no there are no polygons in 8-bit video games it's it's pixels man what are we doing here and then i see some people have posted videos of like them getting the special package from das Wush, and they're playing like 8-bit chip to music i'm like that's the wrong era why it's polygons, man. This is like PlayStation 1 era. This is Nintendo 64 era. This is like, you know, PC games from like the late 90s. Like that's what it's supposed to, that's what you're supposed, that's the themes. That's the era that you're supposed to be representing. And they are like going way back. And, you know, as somebody who came from the video game world, the video game journalism world, and to move into the sneaker space, every time I saw somebody, you know, like talk about, sneakers uh video games and sneakers or you know that kind of thing and it's like a little inaccurate for some reason it always like <laughs> got to me. triggers you triggers a you little bit a 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 little bit, little bit, little bit so yeah so that's why the air max one low poly you know besides being a shoe that i think i would want to buy at some point you know it's and then the but then it has like this pre-order situation and it's you know it's just a little weird disappointing however you want to call it to me so it's, yeah it's um, all those things for you i can tell it's all those things. i can tell it's all those things so i at, at first and and even during this show i like i agree with you this doesn't sound right then i started thinking about it as we as you were talking just now and i want to just put up a, a second tier so to speak okay okay so maybe the the while supplies last is because they only have so many. Let's let's, let's consider that. And mm -hmm. let's think of it in the way that they used to do like the Nike IDs. Like they would do the surprise Nike IDs for like when Kobe right. did the scoring 
Um, and they only did like that you get a limited number of those. And that and that's right. like Nike ID is the ultimate pre order for Nike, I guess. It's mm-hmm. like that's their ultimate order. You can customize your shoe and do it mm-hmm. kind of do it that way. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing I was thinking is this lets them judge the interest. Sure. And they still have the option to being like the response has been overwhelming. We have we, we sold out early, but we're gonna open it up for another four hours tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It almost allows them to sell out of the numbers that they want to sell out to make sure they can get get to the number they want to get to, but then do an extra batch for the community as a way of showing how much they care about the community. You know what? We heard you. We know you want more. We're going to hop back in and give you guys some more. So while I do, I, I do agree. I do think I agree with you. I do think there is maybe there's a little more to it, a little more nuance to it than um, what they're doing. Now, I know a lot of our frustration comes because we want them to just do freaking pre-orders for a lot of different things. And mm-hmm. it is frustrating that this pre-order situation seems to only be happening with stuff on dot swoosh and yeah. not on the proper Nike dot com or in the sneakers app or even in the Nike app. Mm-hmm. I think we would all prefer that. Maybe in the sneakers app instead of notify me, it's a it's a pre order, which would be right. really, really nice. Right. So but I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I'm not trying to go against what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Oh no, I, I understand. I understand. It like gives if you want time to play around. Well, I mean, yes. I mean if you want to look at it as Nike using this as like a test balloon. As, you know, something that, you know, they kind of test out and see what happens. And you're right, see what the response is to, like, a particular release. And if this is them just trying to get their ducks in a row, trying to get everything right to eventually move it over from dot swoosh to, like, the com or the sneakers app, then great. But there just doesn't seem to be that kind of indication that that's going to be the case. This seems like something that's going to be just staying at dot swoosh for the foreseeable future. Yeah. And that's just kind of like my frustration and my disappointment with it is like, this seems like it's not going to be something that's going to be a Nike standard, but you know, th- things change. I mean, you know, John Donahoe is no longer at Nike. Who knows how much of a part he had in making dot swoosh as, you know, the thing that it is right now. And yeah. so maybe new leadership comes in and they, maybe they refocus, re-strategize and kind of rethink everything. And maybe yeah. they go back or no, maybe not go back because going back means that we kind of get the mess that was the sneakers app, you know, for the past decade or so. So maybe it's yeah. more of just like rethinking a lot of like their strategies and kind of refocusing and trying to figure out like what is the best moving forward. And hopefully that does include pre-orders at some point. And, you know, I think we've talked about it on the show before. We're not asking for pre-orders for everything. And because that's not feasible at the end of the day, too, is like. You know, if you could just do like a pre-order for, you know, the next retro of the Black Cement 3s, I would gladly appreciate that. Like say, hey, we have pre-orders up for the Black Cement 3s for 24 hours. And everybody who wants to order a pair, maybe no refunds because sometimes, you know, jackasses do like, you know, (laughs) chargebacks or like whatever at the end. Like maybe that's why the the reason why they don't always want to do pre-orders is because some people can like cancel their orders. Shoes have been made. And they're kind of stuck with it. That kind of thing is a possibility. Yeah. So, you know, if if something like that, a Black Cement 3 or a, a Kobe, like a particular Kobe or a particular LeBron, like they open up for pre-orders, like, you know, just certain releases. We don't, it doesn't need to be every pair of sneakers that Nike makes. It's yeah. just a select number. Just and a so select do that. few. Yeah, just do that every once in a while. And I think people will be satisfied. I mean, I know I yeah. would. I know if I never have... If I never have to like wake up at seven, well, actually, I haven't done that in like years, to be quite honest. Like, never done the seven uh, a.m. <laughs> sneakers app thing. But if I never have to, like, if I know like a Kobe that I want, a LeBron or a Jordan that I want is gonna be like up for pre-orders, I- I'd be all for that, and I would never have to like you know go through that limited hell that is the sneakers app ever again. <laughs> so, uh, I maybe I just thought about this. Maybe. Okay. This is them doing like live load testing for the community's appetite for pre-orders. Sure. Sure. You know what I mean? Maybe Mm -hmm. this is their way of being like, you know what? We're just going to see how people really respond. Now, they already know that people are going to go crazy if a hype sneaker. 
like it's a super height sneaker, say it's a Travis Scott or something like that. They already know that the pre-orders are going to go through the roof or something like that. Mm-hmm. But if they can use Dot Swoosh as a as a testing ground for, let's see, let's see how people respond based on the cool or hype of a shoe. Mm-hmm. Like the low polygon is getting some attention, but it's not getting crazy attention. Oh, right, right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So maybe this is like the build up. So first we had those dunks, the artifact dunks that got the pre order. Did you ever get now those? Now we by have. Them? Yeah, I have them back here. I haven't uh, done anything with them yet. Um, <laughs> this box is just. This is not. This is not. This was not planned, people. Jock just happened to have yeah. those. If you're watching yeah, the video, I have them here. I just. I have. A, Jock just have happened to have it in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they've been sitting back there for probably like three weeks now. Okay. Um, I think the plan the, I I plan to do something with them, but yeah, maybe this is just Nike testing the waters to see as they build uh, as they bu- build building towards a really hyped shoe, so that they have the infrastructure and an idea of what it's going to take to do something like that. This is new new territory for them, and so maybe this is just how they're they're finding their way around. Right. Right. Well, uh, speaking, well, yeah, that's cool. I, I, I kind of want to get over the topic because it just, I don't want, I just don't want to get heated again about the, the coverage of the low poly. <laughs> but you did mention, um, you just start leaving comments, leave comments <laughs> on all the posts, being like, uh, this is wrong. Oh, well, you actually, didn't say this right. you know, do like the, the yes, Simpsons yes. comic book guy thing. Like, well, actually, it's not yeah. that, it's, that's, that, that's not how it's supposed to sound. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Oh my be gosh! That guy well, in the comments. No, no, no. I don't want to be that person we always critique in the comments. Uh, but anyways, um, <sighs> moving on to uh, well, we talked about golf earlier, Jacques, and we talked about like you know bringing a different energy to the game. And um, this past weekend was the uh, President's Cup, and Jacques, I'll I'll yeah. be quite honest. Whoa, you went with the year. Shout out to my niece. Yeah, uh, she loves with the year. <laughs> she she uh, she'll text me every once in a while to say year, and I'll be like, kids. Anyways, <laughs> Kid, these kids, these kids with their years. Um, but yeah, no, the President's Cup. Jacques, I'll be honest, I have not given a damn about the President's Cup ever since its inception. I just, there's, there. it's basically what the President's Cup is, is the annual, well, biannual team competition between USA and the international squad, aka basically everybody who's not a European country because that's the Ryder Cup. Right. So as much as I love the Ryder Cup, as much as I adore that, watch it every year with um, maybe it's my most it's the most go- excited I get for a golf event um, ever is like the Ryder Cup just because of like the passion, the energy and just the hype that comes out of that event. I just can't get bothered to care in the same way for the President's Cup just because they've never really shown the same kind of passion like the and it's not a knock on like the international squad, but it's different when it's like a continent, you know, a yeah, unified continent yeah. of Europe against America. Because what is the international squad is like you've got, you know, golfers from Japan, from Australia, from Canada, which is funny when you think about like, you know, how the proximity of Canada it is to the US, yeah. you know. And for the first time ever this past weekend, I was actually compelled to look at, well, not watch the President's Cup, but look at highlights. Look at highlights of yeah. the President's Cup because uh, Tom Kim and Siwoo Kim were out there just being the uh, just being those dudes and, you know, showing that yep. energy and showing that flair that seems to be missing from these kinds of competitions. And, you know, we've got Tom Kim walking off before like Scotty Scheffler, like, you know, makes his putt. We've got uh, Siwoo Kim doing the night night after a chip in. And we've got all of those things, man. And I got to say, like, it was actually like, I was actually compelled to like, see, oh, who's going to win this? Well, Team USA was going to win because they always win the President's Cup. But it was right. actually fun for a couple of minutes to watch the 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 highlights of this, man. And and it makes me wonder, though, like, is this the kind of energy that the President's Cup needs? Is this the kind of energy that golf needs in general? Like, is this something that we should see moving forward on the tour all the time or... You know, because we've seen it in the comments, we've seen it like, you know, people, you know, even on the broadcast, right? Like, it's cool that it happens in these events, President's Cup, now, you know, Ryder Cup, obviously, but I don't know, or, you know, with the Waste Management Open in Phoenix every year, but is this some, like, I don't know, well, 
the take is that, you know, maybe this is not something we would like to see in golf year round. Like it's okay. That's in for these special events, but maybe we don't see this at the masters or the U S open or, you know, the British open or like, you know, any of the big events. And I got to say though, I, I, I used to be on that side, but now that I see the energy, like, you know, Tom Kim is putting out there, see woo. And like, you know, and the way that sometimes like, you know, Scheffler and all the U S guys are like kind of getting snippy. Like, I kind of want to see that now more and more. And yes. Yeah, man. Like I, 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 that's, that's my take on it now. Like I said, I used to be on that side where it's like, we have we need we need to make these events special and keep them like you know in these like contained spots of like you know the team events or like you know very specific like tournaments but now that i'm trying to now that i'm kind of seeing it this younger generation just being a little bit more feisty i yeah. kind of want to see it more regularly moving forward man yeah so i have very strong opinions about this <laughs> um, i noticed i saw your reel <laughs> i want I want this all the time. I want this energy. See, a lot of the people like this, this goes to just to speak to the golf audience as if they don't watch any other sport in the world. So right, Siwoo right. Kim did the night night thing and everybody was like, oh my God, that's so crazy. I can't believe he did that. It was amazing. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. But they ended up losing the match, which, yeah, which, that was was fine. The, the, which, which to me is fine. But people are like, you can't celebrate like that if you don't win the match. And my response to that is, do football players wait until they win before they celebrate a touchdown? Or do they celebrate every touchdown they get? If somebody dunks on somebody in a game, are they just like, I dunked on you. Let's not do anything because we have, the we're not sure over. if we're going to win this. We're not going to wait. We're not sure if we won this game yet. No, that's right, not right, how right. it works. Somebody hits a half court shot. The crowd goes crazy. The crowd doesn't go, oh, good, good shot. Good shot. They don't, they don't they, you know what I'm saying? They're, that's not how they, how they react. They don't do the golf cart. They don't do the golf cart. Yeah, yeah. They don't, until they're sure that the person's <laughs> going to win. Like, I love this energy and I want, I want to see more of it. I want, like, they get a good shot or they, like, get a, a par save or, like, a birdie save from some random spot. You know what I mean? They hit it into the bunker. They, you know, get out of the bunker and it goes in. Like, I want to see some celebration. I want to see, I want to see the night night. And I like, just like letting people know, like, especially, and then this was a team comp. Oh my God. So I, I loved it. I, I want more of this. If I, if it was up to me, I would send out a player memo from Jay Monahan, like <laughs> dear PGA tour members, love the president's cup, love the energy. Want more of that. Let's give a big round of applause to the Kim's for kicking us in our ass because this is the type of energy that we need. Right, right. Awesome. Yeah, and I and I agree. I think I'm starting to like come to that side because there was a part of me that was like I said before, like I used to like think this is only good for like the Ryder Cup. But yeah, no, now that I now that you brought it up in that way, or like, you know, someone makes a par save and they they just breathe a huge sigh of relief or they just get pumped or, you know, it's the majors, it's a very tense situation. You know, you see somebody doing that and it creates like you know, because back in the days, you would it, it would be like, you know, Tiger Woods, like, you know, doing his thing. And it was more about intimidation. It was more about, like, you know, the steel looks and all that stuff. But yes. it'd be great if, like, somebody... And as much as I don't like Sergio Garcia, like, it was fun when he was, like, going up against Tiger during that one major when he was, like, super young. And I wish he was a little bit more... Like, he was already demonstrative back then. I wish he was... Now that, now that I'm a little bit older, I wish he was more demonstrative. I wish he was... Yeah. A, taking it to tiger a little bit more so you know like i think we could use a little bit more of that energy in the pga tour moving forward now that being said i'm sure some live golfer like live fans are going to be out there saying oh we do that on the live golf tour to which i would say whatever dude <laughs> yeah i just haven't i just haven't seen it i haven't too, there's uh, no so the, the the part of that the problem and again well, I'll, I'll break out the live golf critique my problem with that is that no one cares about those teams at least here with, right. you know, President's Cup, I still have that weird, like, detachment in terms of, like, you know, the, about how, like, connected these teams are. But, I, but you know, with the Ryder Cup, like I said, it's USA versus Europe. There's a really set, like, you know, like, there it's set, like, who the rivalry is. So, yeah. with Live Golf, whether it's just time or whether it's just the golfers that they have on those teams don't really move the needle, they haven't given me a reason to care. So yeah, give me a people reason to care. People aren't invested. 
yeah, give me a reason to care, get me invested, then maybe I'll pay attention. And that's that's also the 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 concern I have about this upcoming the golf league that you know Tiger and Rory are spearheading. So they need to do a great job of getting us to care about the teams. And I think you're like working, you know, with them to a certain degree or like, you know, have like sort of yeah. some relationship with the LA team. So it's that team's job to get us to care about the the golfers on that team yes. to, in a way that gets us to root for them in a way that's beyond just like, Oh, it's LA. I mean, okay. But like, give us a reason to care that you're LA. So, you know, that's just my take yeah, on it. Right yeah. Now, yeah. Right now it's all about the teams and, you know, they put out some information about the players, but they haven't put it, made it where we care enough about the players yet. And I think, I think that's going to come with time. Um, they've, they've got a lot of things they've kind of got to get together to get this season going and running mm -hmm. smoothly. So yeah, uh, I yeah. think we'll start to see them investing more in the players and getting us to care about the players a little more, a bit more in the, in the near future. Um, awesome. So I actually had, I had the opportunity to go to the president's cup. So I was there on Sunday with, with the Adidas when oh. I was on that Adidas trip. So we got to go on Sunday. Oh, okay. okay. The energy was crazy because it was in Canada. The, mm -hmm. all the chants were for the international team. Like right. the, the USA players were getting <laughs> getting booed. Every every hole I went to, it was I-N-T, I-N-T, so I-N-T. That's still weird, like I-N-T. I, like, I know, I get it, it's international. It's hard to, like, really yeah. group them all in that way. And, and it's like, you know, it's not like Europe, right? It's, it's like one continent, like, you know, everybody. Like, yeah. even though they're all come from different countries, obviously. But and, and I, part of it has to do with history. The Ryder Cup has been going on for so long. And yeah. there's a certain chippiness that has always come from, like, Team Europe and the way that they've always just been, like, super snarky against the Americans. So and maybe that's what it is. Like, you know, if, like, the Kims and, like, you know, other, you know, players, like Matsuyama, although he's not really that snippy. But, you know, it, it's that it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take that kind of energy from the international team to really get us to like really be interested because with team USA, it's, it's team USA. You know, we know who they are. We know how they do. So it's going to be like, it's going to be a lot of heavy lifting on that side, the international side to really get us to get on board with the president's cup in the same way that we do the Ryder cup. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. No, no doubt. And the, you know, and some of that energy was even coming from the American team. Like, I don't know if you saw the highlights from, I think it was Thursday, it was Friday, maybe it was Friday. Where Tom Kim was kind of chirping at Scotty after yeah, he hit yeah, a yeah. putt, and then yeah. Scotty chirped back. I got so <laughs> hyped watching that. I was like, "Yes, yes, this is it. This is I love it. I love it. I love it." But to see them kind of chirp at each other, yeah, like what? I was like, "Oh, give me, give me more. Give it, just stick it in. Yeah, just give it in my veins. Like I need this. I need this for golf." It was awesome. so good. Oh, and then even even at the uh, when I went on Sunday, Tom Kim, I think he was playing against I think Russell Henley, I think. Uh-huh. And they were on a par 3 and uh Henley hit a he hit a bad it wasn't a bad shot, it was just pretty far. It was like on the edge of the green and the crowd start chanting uh, started chanting three putt. Three putt. <laughs> three putt. And I was I was so excited by that, even though it was against USA. I was so excited by that, and he ended up three putting anyway. But still, it was just really funny. Tom Kim like got them to calm down and be quiet when he was actually about to putt. Sure, but sure. They were chanting three putt the whole time, and I was like, "This is amazing." Yes, <laughs> I love we need this that. energy. And like I said, yeah, that's exactly 100%. that's exactly the type of energy that we need. It'd yeah. be kind of wild if that actually ends up on like the regular tour. So to be quite honest, oh, like you know, that we, would be so good. That would be so good. So it, it, it'll, that'll take time. That'll take time, just because there's so much like yeah. norms and like uh, uh, expectations from like you know the galleries through the years. So it's gonna take a while yeah. for that to like really change. So, but it's yep. you know, it the the more we build it up, the more it'll actually happen at some point in the future. So, I love all right, it. Jacques. So, um, good episode of the pod. But before we go. It's time for everybody's favorite segment of the show. It's a yeah. sneaker Mount Rushmore Plus time. We're so good at that. We're so yeah, good. Yeah, no, we're so we're awesome. We're awesome. We're awesome. So today <laughs> today we are going to be doing the Air Jordan 5 Mount Rushmore. So once again, yeah. one non OG. Uh, one OG, one non OG. One uh, collab, one PE, and one wildcard. So today, Air Jordan 5, Jacques, 
I think you, you went start first. this week because I started yes, yes, last yes. week. Yeah, I was about to say you went first last week. I will start this week, and my OG colorway of the Air Jordan Five is the grape. Not the gonna grape. lie, I'm not particularly fond of the Air Jordan Five. I used to be for some reason. Like I've just kind of waned on my love of the Jordan Five through the years. And when it comes to the OG colorways. It's only been the grape. It's only ever been the grape, really, that's uh, interested me in any sort of way. I don't know if it's like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air connection or the fact that I just love the color combination of like uh, purple and teal, you know, Charlotte Hornets from back in the day. So, yeah, yeah. great, great fives for me. I assume I assumed you were going to say the black metallic because that's my pick. But I would say <laughs> for my my pick, it's going to be the black metallic. Mm-hmm. Just classic black. You can you can wear it with anything. That's yeah, that one that one kind of goes, in my opinion. Yeah, good choice, good choice. Um, so for my non-OG colorway of the Air Jordan 5, it's the Tokyo 23. Um, why? Mm. Japan. That's really the co- the uh, the connection. I love Japan, love Tokyo, and they made an exclusive, well, I don't know if it was like exclusive, but it was a very rare colorway of the Jordan 5 from like the 2000s, and it was called the Tokyo 23. It's yellow. It's a good one. Pretty cool. And yeah, no, Japan. Yeah. That's basically the reason why I'm I picked gonna... it. I'm going to go with the Wolf Gray. Um, I really loved those. Really enjoyed. Um, I had a pair that was a golf version as well. So right. Wolf Gray. Wolf Gray for me. Mm-hmm. I think that's cool. an easy one. Cool, cool. So for my uh, collab pick for the Air Jordan 5, it's going to be the uh, Off-White. Off-White. Um, I always thought it was like a pretty creative uh, take on it. You got like those holes that you can like, you know, like, you know, kind of cut holes in them. It's a little cheesy yeah, I, kind of gimmick, but I thought it was pretty cool at the same time. It was like it's something different, uh, something different for the Jordan 5. So, Okay, I like that one. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, one of my all-time favorites when it comes to the Jordan 5 is the uh, the Dornbecker. Ah. The, with the, the glow-in-the-dark, uh, mm-hmm. like, highlighted, like, infrared. Not infrared, but um, I forgot what it's called. But, like, the you could... Like, Wait, like, like, isn't it, it like when you put on light. a black light? Yeah, like a black yeah, light. Yeah, you, black like, light. The message yeah, comes out, light. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that that's for me. That's and that that's literally probably my favorite Jordan Five. Period. Oh, that's a good choice. I mean, for just an all time Jordan Five, I think that's a pretty good choice. Yeah. Man. yeah so yeah. Uh, for my PE, I had to look this up because you know, it, th- like I said, there's with these uh, Jordan retros, there's like really a lot to choose from. There's a lot of like the you know the college yeah. PEs. Uh, but I saw a very interesting, like I thought it was a pretty funny article. So for my PE pick of the Jordan Five, it's going to be a Sean Marion player exclusives, very specifically. That was worn by Devin Booker and gifted by Book to Sean Marion when Sean Marion was wow. inducted into the Phoenix Suns Ring of Honor. Something There's something funny to me about the fact that Booker had a Sean Marion player exclusive and gifted it to Sean Marion. I thought that was wow. just like a goofy, funny story. And I'm like, Sean Marion's like, wait, these are my shoes. <laughs> like, I would right. imagine if That's, I was Sean Marion, wow. I'd be like, uh, th- thanks, Devin Booker, for giving me my shoes. <laughs> yeah giving me my shoes back Bang. yeah it's like um how'd you get these did you come to right. my house is this like a pj tucker carvelos anthony situation where like Melo's wondering how pj tucker got his pe's or something like that and like yeah you know so i thought that was a pretty funny story so that's why that's my pick for a pe for me for pe's um not that I have any ties or allegiance to the school but i really liked the way that the uh the florida gator pair looked Mm. Um, that mm-hmm. there's also like a, a, a calves low, but I don't, I don't know if anybody wore it as a PE or if that's just a colorway. Um, but either the calves, I would say, I would say that the Florida Gators PE, but a close second would be like the calves low PE, mm-hmm. uh, the calves low colorway, I should say. I don't know if it's an actual PE or not. Right. Cool. Cool. Good choice. Good choice. And finally for my wild card, I'm just going to go with the raging bull. It's a red solid uh, solid red colorway of the jordan 5 just a nice bold red uh, not that's really a good not, one not really much more else to say than that it's just it's a jordan 5 it's a bold red and yeah no you had like the retro from a couple of years ago but it was part of like a uh a jordan 2 pack from like the 2000s yeah so but yeah nothing more really needs to be said jordan 5 raging bull for my wild card, um, and I, I'm, I hate, I hate, not, I shouldn't say I hate to say it. Uh, I feel like it's one of the times when Supreme got it right. So I would say the Jordan 5 Supreme, the camo. 
I feel like it's it's one of the times where they actually they actually got it right that that yeah the Jordan Wait, in 5 terms of like, Supreme camo in terms of like collab it, it felt like if it, it felt like it just wasn't them slapping their name on it kind of thing right right I think I remember seeing that for the first time in person and thinking to myself I actually did have the, you you're right you know what? I actually did have kind of the same thought I'm like oh Supreme actually put some thought into this one yeah. For, yeah, because you know you're right. We kind of we're, we're kind of both of the opinion of like sometimes Supremes can get really lazy with their collabs. It's like, yeah, uh, let, let's not even put Supreme. Let's put S U P, like sup, right? <laughs> sup, 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 sup. Yeah, no, it's That's a funny. very um, yeah, yeah. It's not funny when Supreme does it. It's funny when we do it. <laughs> yes, one hundred percent. It's so annoying anyways, when Supreme does it. To be fair. Yes, yes, yes. So and, and it resells for like uh ex like you know three four times retail, which is like really annoying. Not that I would ever buy it. It's wow. just why why it's more like why, like why Canada, <laughs> why Supreme. <laughs> That's the theme of this episode. Is like why 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 things. <laughs> why things. Yeah. Why things. Why things. Why things. Yeah. So anyways, yes. Um. Yeah. That is the uh, end of this episode of the Too Hard to Pass podcast, Jacques. I appreciate you uh, being uh, uh, the the best host Your of this show. Yeah, yeah thanks. No, man, thanks. you're the best. You're the best host, man. I love you, man. Oh, oh. that's very kind of you. I know, even though I know I'm you don't trying to ramble because I'm trying to figure out the next thing to say. No, actually, the email. That's what. That's the thing I was trying to remember to say. Yes, oh. uh, we do have an email. It's uh, too hard to pass podcast at gmail dot com. Again, it is too yes. hard to pass podcast at gmail dot com. Like I said, we've got a couple of emails already. So at, at some point, I would like us to do like a mailbag um, episode yes. of the show, and then uh, yeah, uh, we'll put up the sneaker Mount Rushmore Plus on the socials. You can vote on that. Um, I don't know who's winning because I just posted the Jordan Four. Uh, today as we're recording this so i don't know who's winning that at the moment so no, i, I should no, probably win to be honest no no yeah. no 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 we are not doing this right now we are not we are no not we won't we this. won't do it i mean i just i just i should win that's and we'll just leave it at that unbelievable anyway Sounds so like yes the best way to do it yeah <sighs> vote on that on the socials uh let us know and uh next week i'm sure some one of us will do a goofy dance or something like that uh to celebrate our victory yes what absolutely what but it's Absolutely, it's gonna it that's how it, that's how that's how that goes, man. Sometimes we just got we got to show our we got to show that energy, man. We got to get that Tom Kim energy out here on this show. Whenever one yeah, of us Tom wins, Kim, that's the old Kim energy on, the, on yeah, the show. Yeah, the I Kim energy, it. man. The Kim energy. We gotta we gotta break that out here on the show. Whenever one of us wins, uh, sneaker Mount Rushmore Plus. So, anyways, yes. Uh, thank you for watching, listening to the Too Hard to Pass podcast again. Like, comment, subscribe. If you're on the Spotify's or the Apple Podcast, leave us a five star review. We would greatly appreciate yep. that. Five Google stars. Play Store, all the yes. places, all the places. O only five stars. Only five stars. We don't really accept anything less than five because why? Yeah. Why would we? Not six or seven. We just want five. Yeah, we just want five. No, not four. Not three. Not two. Not, we're doing the we're doing the reverse LeBron. Not four. <laughs> not three. Not two. Not one. Five. Not six. Five. Not seven. Five, five, because I don't think there's yeah. any other we're, like we're content. Thing. We're content yeah. with that. Yeah, well, we're content with that. We take that. So, anyways, thank you again for uh, watching, and listening. I am Juan Martinez at Easyville, and Jacques. I am Jacques Slade, uh, which is at Cousteau, K U S T O O, all over the internet. And we will see you and hear you. Well, we'll see you. You'll see us and hear you'll us. You'll see us next week. Yes. Yeah, next all week. Right. All Peace. right, we out. We out. We out. We out. We out.